AI-generated games might be closer than you expect. Just as today we can generate images and videos, what if we could generate exactly the kind of game we wanted simply by suggesting an idea to a computer? Could the digital brain of tomorrow achieve the level of detail necessary to make a game? Doesn't it scare you to think that artificial intelligence might be capable of making something better than we can? This is GTA, and it's more than a mere glimpse into the future of gaming, it's truly a look into a parallel dimension. More specifically, this is a generative artificial intelligence, and it's called Runway Gen 3. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. First place in the world. When we first saw the GTA 5 mod, that wasn't really a mod in the truest sense per se, but instead an AI that changed the look of the game based on dashcam images. It boosted the textures, lighting, and reflections to resemble real-world images. Very cool, but Runway Gen 3 doesn't just change the look of the game, it's an artificial intelligence that can build entire worlds from scratch. Runway is a world simulator. If you and I are in a perfect, permanent simulation looking at a tree, are we looking at something that exists? According to my stoner roommate and the philosopher George Berkeley, yes, the digital tree is real even if it is based on digital processes. This is the concept behind general world models. They're systems that essentially recreate spaces that we could inhabit. A virtual object here is as real as a real object. Well, the ability of this model to capture every detail from depth to the movement of each element in such a consistent manner, it's impressive. World models are useful for many things, including generating realistic videos, but it goes beyond that. It is a computer program that can imagine how the world evolves in response to the behavior of an agent. Basically, these types of models create a video game version of the real world. This means that you can reinterpret the textures, models, and lighting of a game, thus altering not only the look and feel, but also the emotions and visual identity that defined the original experience. User Vague Man asks us to consider a future where we can create these sorts of overlays, altering our games into cartoon, stop motion, glass, Lego, wool, perhaps even a minion theme would be possible. You know, just to annoy everybody, except Aunt Becky. This technique can achieve alternate game art styles like pixel art, low poly, or even cell shading. How many different versions of the same game could we get just by modifying how it looks? The sky is the limit. Now, admittedly, right now, the AI is a bit obvious due to the hallucinations, the occasional fast motion blurring, and the system's occasional tendency to completely lose track of what's happening, like me when I don't take my meds. But considering that this technology does not yet have real geometry as a reference, we can only imagine how extracting precise data directly from a game could allow this to render even more faithful and higher quality reimaginings. Of course, there is a big difference between a reimagined gameplay experience on massive servers and a consumer gaming computer. Runway can only generate videos for the time being, but it's perhaps a taste of what's to come. Essentially, what Runway does right now is take gameplay footage of our favorite game, parse the image sequence consisting of 2D frames, and then alter how each looks. This consumes a lot of resources and doesn't do anything in real time. Runway also only allows you to export clips that are 10 seconds long. No more, no less. Okay, probably less, but that doesn't sound as cool. And yet, despite its limitations, it's amazing how far generative AI has come. So, can we use the power of AI to create video games? 
One of these two games is 1993's Doom. Which one is it? Yep. Then what is this? Well, this would happen to be the work of a crazy little thing called Game Engine, the first game engine powered entirely by artificial intelligence. So it doesn't just run Doom. So what's going on here? Something fascinating, but also a bit unsettling, because all those elements created by the development team, they don't exist here. The human has been removed from the equation. And the most amazing thing is that without a game engine, we're talking about a completely reimagined game designed by a machine and rendered in real time. While Game Engine has been demonstrated primarily with Doom, its underlying architecture could theoretically be applied to any video game. This is probably the first AI-generated image from way back in the Halcyon days of 2015. In a very short span of time, we've gone from generating static pictures to moving pictures. Videos, of course, are a continuous sequence of images at high speed. So if you didn't know, now you know, you're welcome. And video games work kind of like this too, but in this case, the AI is generating 20 frames per second or 20 FPS. Considering though, AI is making this thing on the fly, that's still incredibly fast. Each frame is dynamically created in real time based on what the player is doing. An innovative approach because Stable Diffusion, the model it was based on, is normally used to generate images. But in this case, it's powering a game world. The AI literally creates everything. The state-of-the-art technology behind this is like a digital Bob Ross painting 1200 frames per minute, but this isn't a happy accident. Game Engine's AI was trained by playing Doom, collecting no less than 900 million frames of gameplay. No word on whether the AI, like human gamers, was powered by Mountain Dew and Flamin' Hot Doritos. But much like a human gamer, we can confirm it doesn't go to the bathroom. The interactive objects, the GUI mechanics, and even the logic of the NPCs, everything can be simulated by processing these patterns. Everything can be reimagined. This is CSGO generated by an AI. Running at 10 frames per second on an RTX 3090, it's a neural network that is literally imagining something it was previously taught. Can you imagine that? We can basically control the memories of a neural network. It's not eSports ready yet, by any means, but we have a link to the project and you can actually go try it for yourself right now, if you dare. This could have implications beyond anything we've previously dreamed of. It's a whole new way of creating games. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's not forget that every pixel generated in every one of these frames is derived from a game that already exists. Game Gen O, the promise to build a world from a few prompts. The machines are just the interpreters of a human's vision. There's no polygons, just stable diffusion. A dataset model consisting of over 32,000 videos from various games, more specifically open world games, which were meticulously classified, filtered, and annotated to train the AI. The landscapes that the AI creates are a mix of reality and fantasy that sometimes borders on the ethereal, perhaps even the surreal. Those accidental visual hallucinations that expose the lack of intentionality. Sometimes it even seems like you can imagine the prompts they used to create it, taking the data it was trained on and crafting something that seems new, but it's actually a combination of known patterns. There's something somewhat empty about the result, something almost soulless. 
It's that uncomfortable mix between emotional disconnect and psychedelic dimensionality, which makes a piece created by AI so recognizably AI. We cannot deny that within that lack of authenticity, something unique emerges, a new authenticity. What the AI produces has its own characteristic stamp, a calling card that gently whispers, humans weren't here. For now, Game Geno is only an interactive video generator, more of an early proof of concept. For example, we can generate game footage and prompt it to do certain things, like move forward, and it will generate a video for you. It's really the foundation of something perhaps inevitable. If this becomes public and more sophisticated, creating games could simply be a prompt away. Minecraft was just well cloned, a playable, cursed, AI-generated version of Minecraft that has been trained on millions of hours of game footage. The funny thing, well, actually, no, not funny, they don't mention Minecraft once in their websites. And world models are a whole different beast. Remember, general world models build a mental, yes, a mental of what the world is like and how it works. It's not just about creating photorealism. It is a complete world simulator driven by artificial intelligence, and that's kind of huge. And with big corporations like EA hopping on the AI hype, this isn't far off, is it? Today, a person is playing Doom on Game Engine at 20 FPS, or perhaps Counter-Strike at 10 FPS. Imagine for a moment what this technology could be in a couple of years, and how much has been achieved already in so little time. Is this the democratization of game development? Do we even want this? Do you want this? Do I want this? I'll say no. The best we can figure, AI only quote unquote understands how games work through patterns. This is perhaps a revolution, one that puts development in the hands of something that we don't even yet fully understand how it thinks. One part of me loves the development and seeing the progression of science and the creation of something that we truly only thought could have been science fiction at one point in time and yet now it's here in this day and age, and we are watching it form like, I don't know, a butterfly busting out of a chrysalis, except that butterfly is also trying its damnedest to take jobs away from game developers and artists and writers, and that butterfly has really got some hands, man. I don't know, chat. This is good. This is bad. And obviously, it's nuanced. There's good and bad. What do you think? I'm curious, let me know. Existentialist crisis aside, thank you for watching. I'm Jace Marcus VO, and thanks for also hitting that thumbs up and maybe even ringing the bell if you're feeling a little cheeky. <laughs>